going to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers and then, drum roll please, convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. Relax, you can do it. First, we're going to use a model to show how to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. Check out the two four-section fraction bars. All four sections are shaded blue in the first bar, and three of the four sections are shaded blue in the second bar. If we are only interested in the parts that are shaded blue, and we know each section is a fourth of each bar, we can easily count one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths. Since the numerator is clearly larger than the denominator, we can write seven-fourths as an improper fraction, and we know that it has a value greater than one. Let's look at the fraction bars again. Did you notice that the first fraction bar is really four-fourths, or four over four? And we know that any number divided by itself is what? That interesting number one. So one is the whole number, or first part of your mixed number. The second fraction bar is three-fourths, a proper fraction, since its value is less than one. So three-fourths becomes the second part of the mixed number. When you combine the whole number, one, with the proper fraction, three-fourths, you have the mixed number, one and three-fourths. Congrats! You just converted an improper fraction to a mixed number equivalent using a model. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, now let's figure out how to convert an improper fraction to a mixed number equivalent without using a model. Come on, you knew the training wheels had to come off sooner or later. I tell you what, we will still use the fraction 7 fourths. No, not because you already know the answer, but because it should allow you to really focus on the method, division. While you concentrate on the division, try and figure out what the quotient represents and what the remainder represents in a mixed number. The bar, the line that separates the numerator from the denominator, told us a fraction was an operation of division. Well, what happens when we divide the numerator 7 by its denominator 4? We get 1 with a remainder of 3. But that doesn't look like a mixed number, does it? Since we know that the numerator of an improper fraction is equal to or greater than the denominator, the resulting quotient from the division will be a whole number. When you divided 4 into 7, you got the quotient 1. 1 will be the whole number for your new mixed number. Then, you determined you have a remainder of 3. The remainder represents the fractional parts that do not complete a whole, so it becomes the numerator of the mixed number's fraction. But what about the denominator? You always keep the same denominator. The denominator was originally 4, and therefore it stays 4. It tells us into how many parts the whole was originally divided, or how many objects or members there were in the original set. That means 3 fourths is the fraction part of the mixed number. Now, all you have to do is put the whole number 1 with the remaining fraction, and you have the mixed number 1 and 3 fourths the very same mixed number you got when you use the fraction bar model. Why bother to convert the improper fraction 7 fourths into the mixed number 1 and 3 fourths? Mixed numbers, more times than not, do a better job of describing math. You wouldn't say, she walked 7 fourths of a mile. You would say, she walked 1 and 3 fourths miles. You wouldn't say, he ate 7 fourths donuts. You would say, he ate 1 and 3 fourths donuts before his baby sister grabbed the last piece. Well, that's what would happen in our house. So mixed numbers describe better than they do. Improper numbers, on the other hand, do better than they describe. We will get into that in a few minutes. Oh, by the way, before I forget, if the denominator divides evenly into the numerator, you won't have a remainder or anything left over, so your answer will always be a whole number.